Mike's Daily Podcast. F- F- episode 1000 something. 489, 1489, and I'm Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we have Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Well, it's raining here in Podcastro Valley, Mont today, the last place on earth. It's, it's a welcome change to have Mike's Daily Podcast. A little waterfall from the sky. Not as bad as last year around this time, like these downpours. Mike's Daily Podcast. I remember almost exactly a year ago, taking off a couple days off of work, because you know it's less than a week till my birthday, and I do that. I like to reward yourself, because if you don't reward yourself, ain't no one's going to give a hoot de hoop yeah mike's daily podcast you've got to make her express himself yeah yeah mike's what i went daily madonna podcast and then i threw in a little yeah staples singers in there that's what happened just then my point being you sometimes have to whatever my point is that I love doing this podcast at 5.40 in the morning. Woo! I saw Bob yesterday. Bob is happy because Bob finally got all those things locked in. Just all the music he's been making at home over the countless years. He's finally c- c- made them into CDs and he's going to give them to his kids. And he worked on this stuff so hard Using equipment that would be very difficult it, to, Compared to your Pro Tools today This stuff he's working on Look who else walked in To mix his music Much more difficult Than what we have with Pro Tools today Or even what I'm using today here Recording this podcast Look who walked in Hello Michael Master It's my dad The bigger Bob sounds like he's a nice guy Ooh. He is He's Simply wonderful. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do do that. Maybe the Chris Christie, who that we love, should become the next senator and replace the Roy Moore guy. Day. Yeah. And here's today's podcast picture. Roy Moore's creepy. Do do that. The podcast picture is not of Roy Moore, thankfully. Gosh. I know you want that story to go away so bad. I listened to the testimony from the latest victim whose name was Beverly. And I heard the whole thing she said. That she The whole account of what happened with her and Roy Moore when she was just 16. And just... I ugh. So anybody that puts down the women that are accusing Roy Moore after they have to get up there, get up on the mic... Behind the camera for all the world to see For it to be recorded for all posterity On the websites of the world On the internet For them to go through all of that humiliation Through all of that angst And then the subsequent afterwards The death threats The people coming after them Because it is Alabama And who knows they may live in a small town And everyone in the small town knows about them It's just they are not doing this like it's easy in any sense. It is the most difficult thing. And even Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan, who I played that clip yesterday of him, he they all they all believe the women. I believe what the women said, I think is what Mitch McConnell said, to quote him. And so it just <laughs> Wow. Yes. So there was a very interesting I don't always listen to fresh air. And that's because Terry Gross annoys me. <laughs> she seems like a nice lady, but I, her delivery is just so boring. Hi, it's Terry Gross. Welcome to Fresh Air. It's, I guess it, to some of you, it must be calming. That's why she's been around for decades. But she puts me to sleep. She was talking to the two big writers of the New York Times article which broke the... Which one was it? Which scandal was it? Oh, the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Oh my gosh, what was involved with that? A lot. 
that it required a lot of work. That required Harvey Weinstein. And I wish I could just list all the people that worked for Harvey Weinstein to help him get away with what he got away with. Men and women let him get away with that were, uh, oh, reaching out to the women that Harvey had done his gross things with and saying to the women, you know, you really don't want to hide, you know, from one woman to another woman. We need to like not talk about this because it'll hurt Harvey and we'll sue the crap out of you. All the threats that Harvey Weinstein's team sent out to the victims. Oh, just disgusting. So these, uh, Two writers were talking all about that and about they also uncovered the Andrew what's his name? Louis C. K. I almost said was it Andrew W. K., the guy that's saying we got a party right now, da 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 the anthem thing. Yeah, so they th- th- the whole Louis C. K. thing led into this discussion on Fresh Air about how we let art art that's been tainted by these horrible men that have done horrible things. Can we still watch it? Can you still watch all those Harvey Weinstein movies that got popular that a lot of people saw? Shakespeare in Love. Although I know a lot of people that can't stand that movie. And um, my friend Stormy Phoenix, she asked me because she was writing a paper for her college uh, to watch two Harvey Weinstein movies, but she didn't know that they were Harvey Weinstein movies. And I'm like, wait a minute, Stormy Phoenix, these are Harvey Weinstein movies. You want me to watch these? She's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. He did. He has made so many movies, it's true. So can we still watch those movies? Can you still pull the horrible stigma around that art and still watch the art for what it is? Can you be objective? Can you watch Louis C.K. and still laugh? Or Bill Cosby? Or yeah, Louis C.K. is now connected to Bill Cosby. Like it or not, that's how it is. So this is all things I like to ask on my show. I have done 1,489 episodes episodes of this show. And I'll tell you that there are people on YouTube. This is very interesting. I was listening to the podcast called The Daily that the New York Times does. Listen to this podcast because it really goes deep on some of these stories like the, the Roy Moore story. And today they were discussing... On actually, this was the Tuesday show about how when you when a big major event happens, like the church shooting or the recent school shootings up here in Northern California, people should not get on YouTube or Twitter to look for information immediately in the aftermath of these stories. Like you see the little clip that pops up on Facebook. Don't go to those stories that are on YouTube because what happens is you've got these amateur recorders, these amateur uh, TV personalities, if you want to call them that, or anchors. They try and look like they're professional news anchors, but they get on there on their little homemade YouTube video and they'll throw out stuff like the guy that was the shooter in Texas was a liberal was a was a muslim was a terrorist they they throw out the this total non-facts and it takes days to get down to the nitty-gritty of what actually happened and they're just saying oh we've got this is and they'll say things like hey guys we have 100 percent proof that the shooter that just shot in texas is a muslim or they'll say that about the like the guy in uh, las vegas it's, so be careful is all I'm saying. Uh, right after the shooting in Vegas, there was all kinds of crap on Twitter. That was fake news. That is what's fake news. Not which, when Trump is looking at the New York Times and looking at CNN and saying, you're fake news. Uh, yeah, no. That's the, the, okay. Sometimes they may not be 100% accurate. They may have gotten some of their facts wrong, but they've, oh, they, they, they're a major company. They've got to be right with the facts or they lose, they get sued, they get everything else. They lose their money. They So, I know. Everyone gets the facts wrong. But, oh my gosh, these guys, they go on, the these amateur video makers, 
will make these videos right away because they know the faster they make the video and post it, the more views they'll get. And if they get more views, then they get money through their partnership with YouTube. This in this article, uh, what do you call it? podcast? I guess based on an article in the New York Times, the guy had called up this uh, one host, YouTube host, who he's African American, but he's very conservative. He hates everything that's not conservative, and he comes up with these theories like Obama and Michelle uh, are. Uh, uh, Barack and uh, Michelle Obama Are involved in some kind of uh, What did he say Something that he He made some conspiracy theory about them That apparently got way over A million views And so he is Oh and actually as soon As the New York Times did this Article he got taken down off of YouTube so some, some YouTube Is trying to crack down on some of this Stuff but you have to be vigilant as well. Now, AT&T Wireless, this is a true story. This was just broadcasted on all major media that AT&T Wireless uh, went down last night, the network. the So if you had a tough time trying to call anybody on your phone, they said, though, if you still have issues to restart your device. And that was the other... Oh, there was a couple other stories. I will see. Speaking of phones... According to the New York Times, Apple releases a new phone and then hordes of people groan about how their older iPhones start to not work as well. Uh, Between September and early November, when Apple made the iPhone 8 available, followed by the iPhone 10, Google searches for the keyword iPhone slow jumped about 50%. The phenomenon of perceived slowdowns is so widespread that many believe tech companies intentionally cripple smartphones and computers. To ensure that people buy new ones every few years. And I swore I had a Kleenex in my pocket. Oh, I do, thankfully. Oh, when it rains and I have to be here so early in the morning, my nose leaks. Well, it's a myth. Slowdowns happen. They take place for a less nefarious reason. Nefire. Nefarious. Nefarious reason. I want to say nefarious, if you don't mind. Nefarious reason. That reason is a software upgrade. There's no incentive for operating system companies to create planned obsolescence, said Greg Reyes. He is a former program manager for Microsoft who worked on Windows XP. He says it's software, and software has various degrees of production bugs and unintended things that happen. When tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, and Google introduce new hardware, they often release upgrades for their operating systems. A few days after the iPhone 8 shipped in September, Apple released iOS 11 as a free software update for iPhones. The technical process of upgrading from an old operating system to a new one, migrating your files, apps, and settings along the way is extremely complicated. So when you install a brand new operating system or an older device, problems may occur That makes everything from opening the camera to browsing the web feel sluggish. And you know, what do you do? Do you not upgrade your your system? Because you have to actually do it. And sometimes you have to delete files because there's not enough room for your phone to do the upgrade. uh, Because there's not enough memory in it. Oh, so do you do that? Or do you keep with the old system and possibly get hacked? Because you're, you're not, you don't have all the protections And the bug fixes. Hillary Clinton said yesterday she warned that if Trump directs his Justice Department to investigate her role in the 2010 sale of the uranium company. I just heard something odd. I don't know if you heard that, but um, it would be a disastrous step into politicizing the Justice Department. This is such an abuse of power, she said in an interview with Mother Jones. I regret if they do it because it will be such a disastrous step to politicizing the justice system if they send a signal that we're going to be like some dictatorship like some authoritarian regime where political components opponents are going to be unfairly fraudulently investigated that rips the fabric of the contract we have that we trust our justice system and Trump said we're moving things along we're moving them along fast and, and then he, he also said, oh, I can't find the other one, he said. 
Oh. We had to make the move, and we decided to make the move. So there's uh, several Republicans have called for a special counsel to be named to investigate the Obama-era deal, which happened while Clinton was Secretary of State. And if you want me to explain it further, listen to me yesterday, because I did the whole thing regretfully. <laughs> Explain the whole story. Uh, And then, oh, apparently Charles Manson is back in a Bakersfield hospital. Though the severity of his condition is unclear. Um, Severity of illness, unclear. He's 82. Back in January, he was rushed to Mercy Hospital in Bakersfield for what authorities at the time would describe only as a serious medical problem. And there is uh, Republicans are muscling their massive tax bill through the House with Donald Trump urging them on to critically needed legislative victory and GOP House leaders exuding confidence that they have the votes. We had to make the move and we decided to make the move. Yes, he's deciding to make the move. But the tax overhaul hit a roadblock yesterday as Ron Johnson, the senator from Wisconsin, became the first Republican senator to say he opposes his party's politically must do tax legislation. Uh, Passage of a similar package seemed assured for today in the House where a handful of dissidents conceded they expected to be steamrolled by a GOP frantic to claim its first major legislative victory of the year. That's So it's supposed to pass the House of Representatives today. And this He's woman here... out in the Senate. You've heard this story before. Back over to you. Oh, she said back over to me? Okay. His name is synonymous with mass murder and who inspired a presidential assassination attempt here in... Oh, that was the Charles Manson story, talking about that. And finally, as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, there is going to be a new museum. Uh, where is this going to be? Where is this going to be? In Washington. Washington, D.C. So many museums there. Free museums. The Smithsonian's are all free. Check them all out. They're all fantastic. I love them all. I went to every single one. Well, almost. But I did enjoy uh, the, what was that one? The American History one. Natural History. The Air Museum. There is now a new Bible. Museum of the Bible. That's not a Smithsonian, though. But uh, it's... One you'll probably have to pay for, unlike the Smithsonian's. It confronts the challenge of presenting slavery and the Confederacy. Um, in, uh, it's going to open this week. New depictions of Jefferson Davis and the Confederate flag on the walls and pro-slavery slavery texts in its display cases. The leaders of the museum, according to the Washington Post, Asked many scholars for input about how to depict the Bible's role in slavery and the Civil War, and ultimately chose to include Confederate imagery. We have to acknowledge the pro-slavery argument was often drawn from the Bible. Hmm. And that is what's going on in Washington. What's going on here? It's raining. And I'm outside a cafe anyway with my umbrella. Un- Umbrella Ella Ella A The podcast picture today Was from last night And the lovely sunset Looking out from Podcastro Valley Out Onto The bay And the beautiful clouds That were forming As the rain was coming in Last night So check that out At mikesdailypodcast.com Where you can help out the show Through the Amazon link Buy whatever it is You're going to buy on Amazon And that helps us out There's also the PayPal link If you'd like to help us out That way And all the places You can listen to the show So many places YouTube, Stitcher, TuneIn, the iTunes, Google Play, you name it. We're everywhere. iHeartRadio, Deezer, Weezer. No, I don't think Weezer plays this, but that would be cool if they did. We're all over. So check us out. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com for all those links and the past shows. Yes. And Ariel has more about that. Next show, we will have the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Take it away. Ariel. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.